Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Okay, we're going to do a variation on one of the most popular patterns on the planet. It's just a, a variation of a hair's ear. There's no hair's ear at all on this pattern, but it's just the style. So we've got a size 14 Daiichi 1260 with, I believe, a uh, 2.8 millimeter bead on it. It's black nickel. Yeah, 2.8 millimeter. And the first thing I'm going to do is take some 015 lead-free wire and uh, just build up a little bit of a base so that we can jam it up against the bead so it doesn't wiggle around on us and that it's centered when we finish the fly. And we've got 8-aught uni thread that we're going to use for this bug. It's not critical to cover up all the lead. And this is about where we're going to tie the tail in. Okay, so I've got some black pheasant tail fibers, kind of a generous clump of them. And I'm going to tie those in for the tail. Now the tail shouldn't be super long on a pheasant or on a hare's ear. Maybe that's a little bit too short. So just about like that for this size of fly. And then I'll wrap the pheasant tail fibers up to right about where the lead starts and then trim it off. Then we're going to use two things to rib this fly. We're going to use some pearl dyed flashaboo. Now, pearl dyed flashaboo um, just takes on a, a little bit of a hint of the color that it was dyed with. So if you, if you see this package, this is actually pearl dyed black. So it doesn't look black, but it has a little bit of a dark shade to it. So that's going to be our first portion of the ribbing. And then the next thing is just because the, the flashaboo isn't super sturdy, we're going to tie some monofilament and counter wrap it with it. Okay. So both the thorax and the abdomen are going to be tied out of black ice dove. It's one of the fishiest materials on the planet. Um, and Curtis uses it, uses it on the fly that I hate the most, the chimera. I hate it because it's always kicking my butt on the river or lake. So as you can see, I've kind of dubbed a little bit finer dubbing noodle toward the, the back of it and then kind of gradually built up. And I will probably have to end up adding more to this as I go up. But the idea is to taper the body as you go forward. And this ice dub is pretty buggy and messy. So that's about looking right. I'm actually going to put a little bit more on here. And I'm just going to wrap my thread back to make the, uh, the abdomen or the thorax. I get those mixed up all the time. So I'm going to take my thread about to here. And now I'm going to take my flashaboo and just make wraps up that body. And tie it off about right there. And because we have a black body, it does kind of show through in this flashaboo. And then I'm going to wrap the monofilament the opposite way up the fly. And you shouldn't even be able to see this at all. Okay, so it kind of bound down a little bit. So if that happens, we can just take a little bit of a, a brush and kind of pick those fibers out and make sure that that rib shows through. All right, so we've got a real buggy bug so far. I knew I would do that. I shouldn't have cut off that flashaboo. I was supposed to leave the flashaboo on, but I'm new to this, so cut me some slack. Okay, so I'm going to leave the, the flashaboo on here and tie it in. That's going to be over the top of our wing case. 
we got a straggler. And then just take some black pheno skin. If I can get it off the paper. So pheno skin's just on paper like this. Just peel it off. And tie it in with the shiny side of it facing down. So when you pull it over, the shiny side will be up. So tie that in so that it's right on top of the hook shank. Now let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's not a bad size for a, a thorax. So now we're just going to add more black eye stub. And this is the part where you can get creative. You could add some rubber legs in here. You could add a hot spot or whatever, but I just usually tie it plain old black. All right. So we're going to pull the thin skin over first and tie that down and I like to trim this off before I wrap the the next thing and so if you see I've got the rattle bass scissors and we have rising polish the tips of these and really um, make them fine tips specifically for this type of thing where you've got to get in behind the bead and trim off a thorax So there we've got it tied down and now I'll pull the, the flash part over and I'll wrap that down kind of in front of that tie in point for the, the pheno skin and I'll pull it back and it's tied in pretty durably as well. So that's basically it. Now you could come in um, and tease out some of these thorax fibers. The eye stub will pick out really well. And then uh, you can see my flash on the wing case is kind of crooked, but that's all right. And then I'm, I'm just going to finish this off with some fluorescing flow. So it's this. Uh, Loon fluorescing UV clear fly finish. It's the same consistency as flow. It's very very thin And I'm just going to kind of build it up a little bit I'm going to let that soak in for just a second So it soaks into that thread maybe soaks into some of those fibers before I cure it You can see how that kind of fluoresces And then, then I'm going to add another little dollop on the top And that's it. This is a super simple pattern. This is one of those, I guess you would say, a guide fly where you can tie a whole bunch of them in short time. And, uh, you know, the good thing is with all the different colors of ice stub, you can, you can tie tons of different colors of this thing. Anyway, tie them, fish them. Let us know if they work for you.